Understanding place value and face value is very important for understanding the numeric systems, the number systems that we are using. The thing here is, let's say that we, we know that the numbers are used for counting. So if I have a single pencil or a single stick of wood, I would say that I have one, right? So I would say I have one stick of wood. So that's what I would count. The counting then progresses. So I, I have one, then two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine sticks of wood. So until nine, I have devised different symbols. So I say one to nine, I have devised different symbols for counting these numbers. After nine, if I have an additional, if I get an additional stick of wood, I create a bundle out of it, right? So now in this bundle, I have 10 sticks of wood. So instead of writing this 10, instead of devising a new symbol for it, right? What the way I write this 10 is, I move this one, one digit, right? Or, or one space to the left, and then I put zero, right? After it. So this zero is just a placeholder. Instead of writing this zero, I could have simply written one dash that would have worked as well. The only thing here is to indicate that this one is not sitting here in the ones place or the units place, but it's sitting here in the tens place, right? The position of this one has become significant. It has really become important. Where I write this one is important. This one and this one, Although they look the same, this one, the one to the left is 10 times bigger than the one to the right. So this number here is 10 times, it's multiplied by 10. That is the important thing in understanding the place value, the most important thing. Similarly, right, so now I have a bundle of sticks, each, each bundle has 10 such sticks. I collect 10 such bundles. How many sticks now do I have? I have 100 sticks. So I repeat the same process. I move this one, one place to the left and I put a zero here and this becomes a 100. So again, I'm using the same digit. The digit remains the same one. Its value changes. So this one has two kinds, right? It has two values associated with it. One is the face value, which is the value of one itself, which always remains one. The value of two always remains two, no matter which position it occupies. So this one, this one, and this one, they ha all have the same face value. They all have a face value of one. Place value is the value of the number by virtue of its position. So because the position of this one has changed, it has moved to the left, right? And I have put zeros in front of it. Each such move has made its place value increase by 10 times, right? So the value from one, it changed to 10 and then it changed to 100. Right? So that is the place value, the value of one because of its place. So let's find, try to find out the place value and face value of numbers here. The place value is, uh, the face value is of course 1, 1, 2, 2. It, it, it is just the value by looking at the face of the number, just by looking at the face. Don't take the position into account at all. Then we look at the place value. This is one, simply one itself. It's in the units position or ones position. This one is in tens position. So it, it may look like a simple one, but it's not one. It's indeed 10. It's 10 times bigger. This two is in hundreds position. So it might look like a simple two, but it's really 200. And similarly, this two is 2000. So this is similar to what happens to us, right? When we are moving from one class to the next, the same person with the same face would move from let's say class three to class four. So the face remains the same, the person remains the same, but his position in the school has now changed. He was in class three, now he has become bigger, he has become stronger, he has become more intelligent, perhaps he knows more. Right? And then he has come to class four. So his position has become stronger. So each move makes your position stronger. Your face, of course, would remain the same, hopefully. Right? But this is the basic concept of the place value and face value. And remember, the zeros that we put here, the zeros are fixed here, are for notational purpose only. I could have, and indeed, in some number systems, people use dash. In some other number systems, people simply use blank, blank boxes. Right? So this zero here in the 
that I put after the number are for notational purpose only. Now, if we have positional, uh, if we have a number system where position is significant, right? So, in, in the decimal system that we have seen so far, we have said that the place value depends upon the position. So, the position becomes important in those cases. Then there must be number systems where the position is not important and of course there are. So ancient Egyptian was a one such great example. They had non-positional number system where the position of the numbers did not matter. So how they did it? They had a symbol for 1, they had a symbol for 10. So notice here that they are also counting by 10s. So each digit, right, if you call this a digit or let's call it a symbol, each symbol has increased its value by 10 times. So each subsequent symbol is 10 times bigger than the previous symbol. And they used to make numbers by combining a number, right, uh, these, these symbols in a certain way. So for example, if I have to make number 4622, the way I would do it is, I would take four thousands, so I would repeat the symbol for this thousand four times, then I would repeat the symbol for hundred six times, and then I would repeat the symbol for 10 two times and the symbol for 1 two times. And that's how the number 4622 4, would be formed. Notice that position is not at all important. This number is 4622 and if I move this to the top, right, the thousands, if I move them to the top, the number still remains 4622. So the position was not important in this system. And it's a great example of non-positional number system. Let's move back to the positional number system because those are important for our class. We really have to delve into it a little bit into li little bit more detail. Here are the here is a four digit number. Of course, it has four digits. The digits are labeled 0 to 3, 0, 1, 2, 3. Okay, these are known as the indices or the index of the digit. So digit 5 is at index 0. Like I said, each time we move a digit to the left, the digit increases its value by 10 times. So this one is hundreds. If it moves to the left, it becomes thousand, right? So the number increases its value by 10 times as we move it from one place to another. And that's why the decimal number system has a radix. That's what we call radix of 10. Because the numbers, the digits increase in value by 10 times as we move them towards the left. The number itself is, as you know, 1125. Of course, since we have a radix 10 system, which is our decimal system that we normally use, there are other systems as well. For example, radix 2 system is known as binary system, which is used in all computers, mobile phones, everywhere. It's a radix 2 system. Can you think of another example? What about the clock? The clock, what happens? You count till 60 seconds. 60 seconds, as soon as you touch 60, it becomes a minute. So one minute is equal to 60 seconds. Similarly, when you count minutes, as soon as you reach 60 minutes, you translate that to one hour. So each shift from seconds to minutes to hours is multiple of 60, right? So you have is, so hour, is 60 times the minute, minute is 60 times the uh, second. This system is known as sexagesimal system and this was developed in Babylonia and it's still in use like for example I said the inner clock. Now of course when we look at the zero I, I told you in a positional system the value of the zero the the zero itself is used only to indicate or only to change the position of the significant numeral, the numeral that we are really interested in. Therefore, the zero has two purposes. One, it is used as a placeholder, right, to denote that we really have an empty space here. We would put a zero and this becomes 109 instead of becoming just 19, right? So if the zero was not there, this would have become 19. But since we put a zero here, it became 109. Of course, I could have as well written and it would have remained the same. It would have meant 109 only. The zero is thus used as a placeholder to denote that we really want to shift the digits before it. 
another use of zero in our systems is of course for counting zero means no count right it's zero we don't have any of anything of something we'll say i have zero zero of course is very important numeral it was invented by indians our own aryabhat in 520 ad invented zero not only that we later on refined it so initially it was known as kya we later on refined it our own brahmagupta developed the idea of zero not only as a positional number but also as a number in itself like as, as a as a count in itself he de devised rules of really counting with zero the indians then transferred right from india this numeral system then went to the arabs where further refinement was done finally fibonacci and others worked on it as well and therefore this numeric system the decimal system or the or the digits used in the decimal decimal system are also known as hindu arabic system it is very important very important for your exams thank you